I decided to re-enroll in printmaking because I just wanted to learn so much more. So I did one day a week back at Tate with him, um, which was just the best thing for me. So I was so cathartic to be able to sink my teeth into some art and expression and to sort of document my journey. But um, yeah, in a way, it really helped me through because uh, I was so busy you know, coming up with ideas for the artwork that I didn't have so much time to dwell on you know, the gravity of the situation of having a series of illness and, and confronting that and coming to terms with that. So at the beginning of 2012, when I re-enrolled in Tim's course, the first printmaking assignment was to do a, a self-portrait series. <laughs> so I was just in the process of losing the hair and, um, you know, feeling pretty ordinary with King of So what else could I do? I just had to document what was happening to me. So in this book um, is that work, which is a series of five etchings, looking at the vulnerability of um, confronting serious illness and losing hair and my self-image and all those sorts of things. So if you want to have a look at that later, it's, a, it's not pretty. It's ugly, <laughs> but it tells a story, so that's fair. So after that, um, the work became a lot more positive as, as time went on. And um, you'll see in a lot of the images, there's these little ladies. And they started out with the pink lady symbol, which most of you probably know is, is represents people suffering breast cancer and, you know, what charities use it as a promotion thing. So I thought I'll put these little pink ladies into my work and the first one I did is actually a holograph which is in the next room and um, the lady looks a bit like the pink lady in the catalogue and from there it then became a chain of ladies because I, all the other people, I became aware of how many people were going through this illness and how many young people were going through this illness and I, that I wasn't alone and because of breast cancer, I've met so many wonderful women, and a number of you are here tonight, which is so nice, who've been down this journey as well. And um, through this illness, I've made a network of friends, and you know we draw on each other's strength, and you know uh, provide each other with hope and resilience, and all those things. So this paper chain. Ladies, they became an icon for breast cancer for me. So they just popped up in everything. They popped up in my paintings in little hidden corners and and but particularly in printmaking, the ideas just kept bubbling and bubbling and bubbling away. So I started making the artwork and when I when Lydia offered me this exhibition, I thought I'd do something completely different, but I still had these ideas in my sketchbook. So I thought, oh, I'll make a few of those and get them out of my system. Well, they just bubbled and <laughs> bubbled and I, I had so many, I just had to continue on the theme. So the little people in the paper chain, the paper chain is sort of representing um, strength because paper chains are quite strong. They can be very long, but they're only made out of paper and they don't tear. But they're also very fragile and that's sort of the human condition, that fragility and you know vulnerability. But it's also about that network of friends who've been through this as well and, and the strength that you get from other people, from family and from friends. And yeah, so the little people have eventually broken out of their chains quite often and have just become little characters of their own. They're often bald, <laughs> which is representing the chemotherapy stages, and sometimes they've got pink dresses on. Um, but they've just taken on a life of their own. And the title of the exhibition, Vertigo Worries, is about that diagnosis of, of cancer, and not just breast cancer, but any cancer or any serious illness. Um, when you're told something like that, it's like standing on a precipice and thinking, you know, that sinking feeling of everything falling away and that you're about to fall off and everything's out of control. And the little paper chain people are representing um, standing on the edge but not falling over and confronting your fear and instead of falling over the edge, flying and soaring and so that's why they're always flying. They're, despite things going on in their life, they're living life to the fullest, they're having fun, they're rising above the challenges and that's what I see so much. I see people going through serious illnesses and 
it doesn't have to be illness either. It's any life challenge and people rising above it and despite what's going on in their life, um, living life to the fullest and being positive and happy and um, filled with hope and living each day as it comes. So that's sort of the theme of the exhibition. The works themselves are mostly etchings, um, which is metal plates um, with works drawn onto a metal plate. I'll talk about the process in just a moment. There's also a, a few lino cut prints, which I think are in the next room. Um, there's a couple of wood block prints. That's a, a plywood wood block wood cut print, and there's a couple of wood blocks over here, um, carved into wood. And I have one common graph. So there's a, a variety of mediums, um, but majority of etchings because that's my first love. I just like the textures and the sensitivity that you can get into an etching. It's it's like a, a you know hand drawn piece of artwork and it can be quite difficult. <coughs> so with the etching, um, you start with an aluminium plate and prepare that and get the edges all smooth, then coat it in a ground which resists acid, and then draw into that ground once it's dry with a, a needle drawing tool and that exposes the aluminium. So you're not actually scratching the aluminium, just exposing the ground and the aluminium. You make up a bath of copper sulfate and salt solution, and then the plate of etch, which is the forming of the line. So as, as time goes on, the um, copper, I don't know if this is technically correct, but <laughs> sort of, the copper sort of deposits on top of the aluminium. <coughs> some sort of chemical reaction and, and it starts to eat the aluminium How does that sound? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's magic. We're a process of magic. <laughs> <laughs> in your chemistry. So, yeah, that'll have to do. And, um, so then you get to etch line. After that, you then clean the plate. So you're left with an image that's just lines. Then to get all the tones, the various tones, you then go back in and paint with your ground paint out the areas that you want not to achieve further and then re-etch and you might do that three, four or five times depending on how many tones you want. So each plate might take, well some of the plates I've done recently took pretty much all day to do, you know, re-paint and then go back into the acid bath and then do it again. And then there's the inking up process. So once you've got your final image and it's all clean, ready to print, you rub ink vigorously into the plate and then when it's completely rubbed into every little groove, which takes quite a while, then you rub it all out. So then you've got a soft cloth and you're wiping all the ink off the surface of the plate so that only the ink is only kept in the grooves that have been etched to get your tones and your lines. Um, so just that process usually takes half an hour per print, pretty much, when you, and then put your plate down on the press here and put your dampened paper on top you blank it down and then roll it through the press under a fair bit of pressure and you just hope that the print turns out well at the end and I have a lot of values in the process and when it comes out and the plate slipped a little bit and you've got a line down here and go, ah! <laughs> so it's very much that sort of thing but um, the whole process is, is almost like a meditation to me. I, I go into the, the zone where I'm printmaking and I'm very young. Um, concentrating on what I'm doing and enjoying the process. So it's very different from painting, which is my other great love. Um, it's a lot more disciplined. But um, I've really enjoyed putting this work together and it's been such a wonderful experience for me to express myself. And I really do feel that it's helped me through my journey and I've got a very positive outcome and diagnosis, which is wonderful, but so many people going down this road don't. Um, so I hope it speaks to them as well about, you know, making the most of every day because life is a gift and, you know, so I thank you all so much for coming and, um, yeah, enjoy. <laughs>